So anyway, just um, happy Juneteenth and we'll get started. I will turn it for those of you who are new and don't know me, I'm Jody Evans. I'm one of the co-founders of Code Pink um, and I'll let Emily take it away. I'm Emily. I'm the local peace coffee coordinator at Code Pink. Good to see you all. Happy to have you here. Um, like Jody said, it is a holiday. So thank you for taking your time to, to show up here and, and learn with us. Um, and we'll start with some announcements um, before we get into the rest of the call. So I'll put everything in the chat. I'll do that now. Um, we'll see it there. The first one is we're going to have a tree sharing webinar on um, July 2nd. Our summer schedule is going to change a little bit because um, it is summer and our next call would have fall, fallen on the 3rd, which is obviously right before the 4th. Um, so we're going to shift it to a webinar on the 2nd that's going to share our new local peace economy website and show you how that interacts with the workbook. Um, if you're familiar with the workbook, um, and if you're not, I can put links in the chat there too um, for that. Um, and so, yeah, we'd love to have you there. So you can register the, um, on that link. Our next call, our next Wednesday community call, like this kind of call, will be July 17th. The link to register is there. You can add yourself to our local peace economy Padlet. This is something, a way that we're kind of collecting um, in, who is where, and that way people can maybe see if there's someone near them that they want to connect with. So I'll share my screen really quickly just to show you how that works if you haven't put yourself on there yet. Um, so this is Padlet. You can see we have some people who added themselves here. I'm here in Denver, Colorado. But the way that you add yourself is you hit this um, button here. You search your place. Let's say I wanted to add Philadelphia, because that's where I'm from. Click that. And then I would write something here and say, Emily, you know, a little identifying information about myself. Maybe if you're working on a local peace economy project, you want to share that. You um, you can do that and then hit publish. You can also add photos and stuff, but I know that's a little involved right now. Um, and yeah, it's just a way to see who's near each other and see like what local peace economy work we're all doing all over the country and world even. Um, so I will delete that and stop sharing. John, do you have a question? Yeah, um, it sounded to me like you were talking about something other than Zoom. Uh, and I think a lot of us know Zoom a lot better than some of the other uh, uh, methods of, of communicating. She's going to pop in the chat, the Padlet, so you can you can just add yourself. Oh, okay. Yep, it's the third link there in the chat. Um, I'll do my I'll love do my best. I'm not very okay. good with chat. All good, no worries <laughs> at all. You can't add yours. It's definitely not a requirement. So, um, and John, if you'd like us to do it, just put it in the chat. Add me to Padlet. Here's my name and here's my city, and we'll do it for you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Next announcement. If you are working on or have ideas for a local peace economy project or offering, but you want some extra support and kind of uh, planting the seed or tending to it, um, feel free to email uh, me at emilyfranco at codefeed.org. Set up a time to talk and we can support you in whatever, whatever ways you need. We also have a local peace economy listserv that people use to connect between calls, especially as the calls become less frequent in the summer months. It's a great way to stay connected with each other. Maybe even do some self-organizing if that's something people are interested in. And then lastly, maybe some of you were there. I'd love to hear in the chat if you were, but Jody and I just um, did the Gaza summer school session, uh, two print session on Monday night. Um, and we talk all about the local peace economy. So if you want to watch that recording um, and you'll get a little taste of the new website that's coming as well, um, the link is there in the chat for you. And yeah, again, we'd love to hear if anyone um, here um, is new um, and learned about this from the call. All right. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to email me or um, put it in the chat. So now that logistics are a little bit settled, we can ground. And also, Elise, you can put all the different places that you um, uh, have your roots. 
<laughs> oh, good, Polly. Yeah, love it. <laughs> you enjoy the little piece of session. Great. Thanks, Polly. Yeah. All right. So, as many of you know, and uh, we always begin with a piece of culture and as a way to ground into the call together. Kind of take a moment, take a breath, um, feel ourselves, feel our bodies, find our breath. So tonight we're going to start with um, an excerpt from a poem called Reconnecting by Libby McNamara. It's a bit of a longer poem, so I just um, chose a couple stand a few stanzas, but I'll put the link in the chat and highly recommend reading the whole thing. It's it's so look at pieces on me. It's great. So I'm just going to take a moment and just take a collective collective breath together. Reconnecting by Libby McNamara. Reconnecting with my joy for life, I appreciate being alive in this time. I feel gratitude for the wonders around and within. As I sense the timeless beauty expressed in the heart of the daisy, I reconnect with the radiant beauty traveling through the center of my eyes. Reconnecting with the splendor present in every humming insect, in every bird in flight, in every whispering of the leaves, I touch the icy fear present in me, that one day these treasures will be lost from our world. Reconnecting with the well of sorrow that lives inside my belly and travels so deep, my endless tears mourn what we have lost and my desire to protect is awakened. Opening my eyes to the challenges of our times, I welcome the possibilities and opportunities for change and growth. I reconnect with a fuller vision of what is possible for myself and the world. Reconnecting with strands of life woven between generations, I feel myself as part of the community of all life. Reconnecting with the reassuring, reassuring presence of the Milky Way, time and space stretch, and I know not what to expect. Reconnecting with the collective and self-responsibility I realize we are too powerful not to make a difference, and I find the courage to take a step forward. Mm. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, so welcome everyone. And um, today we really wanted to connect with you on what's happening and some reflection, because reflection is so important in this um, this path that we're on, and um, and really, the poem that Emily read is is where my ref I, I'm going to start by reflecting, and then Emily's going to reflect, and then we're going to ask you to. It's just like what have you witnessed in these last months that um, you weren't aware of before, or a new way of being, or seeing, or you know, it's as we still, as we step away, more becomes available to us. And so for me, it's watching this election season and seeing the fear and hate that's driving in it. And um, really watching people who believe they are acting rationally when they're in fear and hate and opening my heart to their, to be able to witness from them, like the, the level of certainty, the level of that there's somehow in fear and hate that gives them this level of certainty that is confusing when you're watching it from the outside. And, um, and I think so much was in that poem about how to be, you hear him say he's witnessing the beauty, understanding the loss. I mean, even as John said earlier, when we were just starting the call, it's like to be able to witness the loss, but not from this anxiety and fear, but from this relation to this belief in this knowing that I am powerful. And therefore, instead of like, oh my God, running around with heads on fire, totally unreasonably, disconnected to everything. Um, you know, like I had a girlfriend tell me, well, I have to support Biden because Trump's going to be worse and uh, I have to save the planet. And I'm just like, but if you're not connected, so it helped me see like, if the decision doesn't involve all of life, like if it's not whole and there's a way that fear takes us out of wholeness. 
And so, be, and, and it does that by that, first of all, just taking us out of. Um, very early on in my life, I learned to pay attention to fear, maybe because I was, there was like fear showing up and I was like, is that a real fear? Can I do something about it? And if I can't do something about it, then I don't really feel like it's a real, real feel. What is it? You know, what is there that I need to investigate? Because if it's a real fear, you can usually know exactly what you need to do to act. Um, I, you know, I say that to people, you know, I, I also have the China's Not Our Enemy campaign. And when they come at me with all these, you should hate China because I'm like, and what can we do about that? If you give me something to do, I will do it. Otherwise, you're just using it to drag us to war. And so it's very helpful to have, it's like, step back. What is that sentence meant to do for me? You know, is it useful? Can I use it? Is it, does it help me in my next step? And that space of response instead of reaction. So I feel like I'm really witnessing and I use what I see as a way to help me and just bless others. Because again, we're creating a future and that is an attraction. You know, it's not, we don't need to bring anybody with us. That whoever shows up is with us. It's not, we're not proselytizing. We're, we're like, it's going to take all our energies just to create what we're creating and be in our imaginations and listen and find what wants to be born and create, you know, like if we pay attention to that, I, I can promise you, given what I've watched in the last, you know, eight years, attraction happens. And even to look at what's happened in the last eight years and how many things have grown and how they've grown and how people have learned. And, 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 and in my wildest imaginations, when I said early on, you know, and the coming fascism, I would have, I had no idea what it would look like, but I just knew the conditions had been created for it to come. And so um, it's like also what's coming also is the things that are exposing. So in the same way, it's coming, ex the exposing of the underbelly, the exposing so we can make choice is happening at the same time. And so they're being able to create these local peace economies is, is to give that space of like, I, you know, like that is not the direction I want to go in to be able to give people a place that attracts them into this creation of the future. So as we're um, entering this these summer months, and like Emily said, we're going to try to, um, you know, make it just like one call in July and one call in August so that everybody has a, a chance to be in the soil and to be connected to the earth and be connected to community. And, um, you know, we'll have our, our I think they're, less, they're like monthly, um, so that we can come back with our questions, et cetera. But... Um, to encourage the place of reflection so that when we do come back together, I wanna to hear the reflection. What's different? What did you see in the space of witness listening? Not, it it needs to change. Um, but, you know, the, the place of like, what is? Here we are in the what is. Um, the, as I was looking at this rash, this person, speaking so rationally, I, I was um, trying to understand what rational meant. Like, what, what is rational? You know, like, what does that actually mean to people? Well, how do we, how have we been uh, collectivized into a concept that has no rationality at all? It's not rooted in anything, but we believe ourselves to be rational, even though we are drinking this Kool-Aid daily that isn't grounded, isn't for us, isn't about humanity and life, that we're, and why does the narrative give us that sense of security over the, um, the unknown, right? So it kind of helped me unpack something I've been looking at. It's like that space of discomfort, all the comforts that come in, so that we don't have to feel uncomfortable or those create that space of living in the narrative instead of the groundedness that always give you a sense of like 
um, aliveness that I think we've learned, we've been conditioned to think is uncomfortable when somehow the deadness has become comfortable, if that makes sense. And, and that's where we get used. And, and that was what I was observing as I was trying to figure out why does this person feel this is rational when they're using an excuse, which is just a fig leaf on top of murderous insanity? Like what, what is that, how is that serving them? And it's that place of comfort when we get owned by a narrative, instead of having to be in the relationship with um, the unknown and finding our place different or apart from the agreement of um, what we live inside of. And one thing we know is this has been happening for millennia. Um, you know, from every religion back 3000 years ago, this is core. So it does, arise in humanity, it does arise in togetherness and it has been dealt with by religions and philosophies, but there's something about us not paying attention to it. Um, it's in indig indigenous cultures, they have ways to pay attention to it. What are we responsible to and for? What does accountability look like in agreements and communities? And we don't, we're living in the abandonment of that. And, um, and the abandonment of clarity and integrity and intention, attention and commitment have been replaced with bullshit, basically, you know, just full on bullshit. And um, and so in the in the grounding into these things, it was just another reminder of why grounding, why commitment, why and the, the reminder that it's gonna make that out there look very strange, but you don't have to respond to the strangeness, just the witness of it. And the, what do I learn from it? And, um, you know, I know there's artists here and there's, it's like, how do I, how do I in, um, infuse what I'm learning in what I'm doing? Because that, you know, like I said, we're composting into the new life. We're not saying no to it. We're just transforming it, composting it so that it's not a separation from, but a composting of. Um, so anyway, that was my reflection for the week. Um, and then um, Emily, you could give yours and then we'll open it up to others who I'm sure have been reflecting um, on all this work. Emily. Thanks, Jody. Yeah, so much, so, so much. Um, the one piece that I've that's been really alive for me lately is this piece about attention that we talked a lot about, um, how I continue to take my attention back from the war economy and put it into the peace economy. And to do so, I have to be willing to see myself outside of the war economy, like Jody was just talking about, to feel, even though I'm, I'm still part of it, but to take myself out and to feel into the care the earth is offering me, that my friends and community are offering me, that I offer myself, I have to be willing to know myself beyond the limited identities the war economy has imposed on me in order to, to create anything different. Who am I outside of these limited identities? And this question for me has begun to open up the possibility for me to consider the same for others and the collective. Who are we outside of the system of domination? And how can we live into that even as the domination continues and we must resist it? And I think people really struggle with this. Um, and pivoting away from the war economy and into the peace economy has helped open my eyes to the abundance that really is all around me all the time. The ways my community and the earth are offering me and others what I need all the time. I mean, I walk out my door and I see a patch of dandelions growing, um, which we call weeds, but is really medicine being offered to me by the land. I mean, we, we drink dandelion, or some of us um, drink dandelion tea. I walk across the street and I see a little free library and a few houses up, there's a housing co-op. I go to the park and there's a free yoga class being offered or a dance gathering of some kind. Sometimes it can be a little rowdy. <laughs> um, a few, few, few more blocks up I, is where I pick up my veggies from my CSA share. And it's like my favorite part of my week to go pick up my veggies and talk to the farmers, um, hang out with them for a little while. 
And then a few more blocks up, there's a mutual aid dis distribution happening. And this is all within walking distance just from my home. So in, in a way, this process has for me has really been about learning how to see again. Um, and also in the last few weeks, I feel like I've peeled back a new layer in my own learning journey. Um, I'm coming back into my body and actually feeling my body in a new way, like physically feeling my body, which opens up space to feel more emotion and let it flow. And this is uncomfortable, um, but this increased capacity has kind of thrust me into a new, a new cycle, a new turn in the cycle of reconnection in a new way. And I'm integrating care into my days in new ways for myself and for the earth, knowing that they're not separate. And I'm feeling grief more deeply. Last week, I cried like several times for no particular reason. Um, but we all know there are a million and one reasons to cry right now. And I was just tapping into that sadness and tenderness for the ways we are hurting collectively. And joy and celebration, admittedly, for me personally, is the hardest part of the cycle. So definitely still working on that one and um, will be for a while. But but what I want to say with sharing all of this is that the last few weeks have been a reminder of how important our bodies are in this work, that this truly is an embodied process and not just a mental or intellectual one. And that's why we have so many of our uh, cycle of reconnection resources focusing on the body or embodiment or somatics. Um, and if you have any questions about this or want help finding specific resources, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to support. It's like my favorite topic. <laughs> um, but the other piece I want to say in sharing my experience like this is that there are layers to this work. Jody and I were talking about this earlier. Um, and it really is a cycle. And there is a richness to discover as we peel back the layers again and again and again. And like Jody said, that's what we're inviting you into tonight. Wherever you are in this cycle, whether you are wherever you are in this learning journey, continuing to peel back the layers and see what richness and aliveness you can discover from your own life. Um, and um, the life of your community as you gather with them and, um, yeah, with, with together. Thanks, Emily. So anybody want to share a recent reflection? Hand up. John, you just need to unmute. Can you unmute? Well, can you <laughs> oh, hear me? John Russell, it's John Jerpe. He's going to go first. Oh, and the then other he... John. Oh, yeah, sorry. The <laughs> other John. Sorry. Next, you. You're you're unmuted, John. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, I guess what's striking me in all of this is something that you talked to pretty briefly several minutes ago. You talked about, I think, it's something like loyalties that don't make any sense that people can't account for. All my life I've coped with evidence, I've dealt with evidence because I practiced law for 25 years. And they've always seen two or more people interpret evidence differently. That's the crux of authentic evidence handling for one of a better phrase. Now we're seeing a new subpopulation of Americans. We're seeing a subpopulation of people for whom evidence per se is irrelevant. I mean, when someone says, I see a green tree and somebody else says that's irrelevant because it's not on the side of the road we're worried about, that's two different, those are two different interpretations of evidence. We're dealing with people for whom evidence per se is irrelevant. That's a phenomenon that I can't wrap my head around either. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. And I think that goes to what I was saying. It's like, there's a, it's the blinders of the, the blinders are getting narrower and narrower and narrower. Well, well, well seen. Thank you, John. Um, and John Russell, you now. Okay. You can hear me okay? Yep. Okay, yeah. So uh, so John was just mentioning uh, about uh, evidence. And I was suddenly remembering, uh, did anybody, any of you see the movie a long time ago? I don't know if it's still showing uh, Rush Roman. Yes. 
You did see it, yes. And uh, and we were left with the question, who, if anyone, including the ghost, got it right? <laughs> so yeah, there are so many different ways to interpret. Um, and the only other thought that comes to mind is that I spend a lot of time every day uh, with e with left emails that I'm reading. And uh, um, they're, of course, not very encouraging, to say the least. Uh, but um, occasionally, living here, not far from the Rocky Mountains, here in Boulder, uh, Colorado, um, I get a chance to be surrounded by nature. And I figure, hey, I'm taking a short vacation. If there's something off to the left that, uh, in the of the road I don't like, I'll look to the right of the road. Uh, <laughs> There's no no point in uh, in in being angry or upset when I'm trying to enjoy myself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, interesting about um, uh, yeah, evidence and what we ground ourselves in. So I guess that's the place of how the evidence will speak to us is in that space of what we're grounded in. Who else would like to share a reflection? Joe. Oh, you muted, Joe. It's in the bottom left corner where it says mute. I know. I've, oh, I've there you done. got it. You got it. Oh, yeah. You. Good. <laughs> I just uh, had an interview. I, I'm interviewing someone uh, for a Transition Town magazine that uh, Transition at uh, Peterborough, this is where I'm living in Ontario, um, has made some strides in the Transition Town movement, which some of you may fam be familiar with. Um, it started in Totnes in uh, in the UK. Anyway, uh, she started some time ago a nature center, and then there were all kinds of <laughs> life circumstances that put the kibosh on some of those projects. But we're reviving it now because I've come. I've had some really profound experiences that have been a consequence of really hard work I've done to try to understand something about the true nature of, of our relationship with the natural world and how that's been severed and what the consequences are and how we can get back. So I just wanted to add that I feel as though we had an incredible interview. Oh my God, it was an amazing interview. I'm going to type it up and, and submit it. Uh, but the point that I want to make is that I think, and that we came to realize, is that a lot of people are, are having these kinds of expre uh, experiences with the natural world that are maybe may more profound than ones they've had before. But there isn't always an easy way to articulate that. And that realization has was profound for both of us. And so that has formed a foundation for the kind of work that we're going to do at this center, which was started some time ago, 25 years ago, and then fell on odd times, et cetera. So I just wanted to add that because I think that it isn't that people are ignoring they just don't know how to express it, you know? So I think that that's where the arts come in and other phenomena and other incredible ways that we have because we're creative, like the natural world is creative. So we can find ways to express ourselves about our experiences in the natural world and to share others, to to uh, you know, to include, uh, sorry, to 
uh, inspire others to share their experiences too. And then I think we can move to a, a new way of thinking from that perspective. Thank you. Joe, that was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, not only that, but it's beautiful modeling of the reflection of what you can do locally from the thing you learned and how exciting, I can't wait. And we should, when you write it, we can put it up, you know? All on, right, I'll on send it. Um, I'll send it. That is so exactly, um, that was so, I felt that from your heart and from your experience so immediately. It yeah. was just like, you saw it and here's the thing to offer back. And of course it's right. aha of of the thing that has been taken away it is like why are we here destroying the thing that we need to live right is that I mean, yes, excuse me for interrupting <laughs> but it, honest to god when i walk out my front door i'm like holy mackinac really because it's <laughs> phenomenal what i see the variety of blossoms and, and <laughs> shapes and colors <sighs> How can we take that for granted? How, see, that's the pivotal question. How is it living in this extraordinary richness that we have come to be indifferent? Oof. How, that's that's the question. Oh, but Jim. not, we don't stop there and start philosophizing. We ask that question and we find ways to address it, yeah. Emily, I hope those notes are in there. That that was like a, that's the how have we become indifferent, is the question I think that was the the the, the thread. So Joe, it's amazing. I mean, we, honestly, you, you can take any. We can talk forever, which yeah. we did today. I mean, because there's a thousand and one examples of people that just aren't in positions of power. Of course, the poor things are exposed. But I mean, what really? Oh my goodness. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Anyway, it looks like we've got. On to it. I saw somebody else's hand. Wait, before you talk, John, I wanted to see Polly. We let's let everybody have a chance before we come back. Polly. Um. Well, I um, I think Jody got me thinking about this a few times this week, but I've been thinking about this idea of oneness mm. and how comfortable it is sometimes to. Uh, embrace that we are also one with those that we don't really identify with so I mean I've been thinking about that I don't have any answers about it but I'm also um uh thinking about it, the times that people talk about the encampments I wasn't at one but I have heard so many people talk about how great that felt and how people were working together and you know forming their own little peace economy within the encampment and I've been to many marches and I feel that oneness there, but I also think that we can send it out into the world, this idea of peace and this idea of um, community and working together and this whole idea that together we can make um, a better world, which brings me to like this whole idea of um, revolutionary optimism which I'm always trying to come back to because you can get, you know, you can drown in the negativity and the sadness and the horror of it. I think we can't let go of it, but we also can look to these positive times and to this idea of, of unity. That's all. So Polly, that, um, that's a really good thing to bring up. And, and I, that's what I was trying to say in my thing. It's the composting, not the othering, not the separation. But it's just like where, and even it's your own composting in the sense of like, that's me. You know, it's like, how do I take that part of myself and compost it and let them be where they are? You know, um, if someone has a lever of power or if someone is violent, I will expose, I will, you know, create, I, I have a responsibility to my community. So what does that responsibility look like? We each figure that out for ourselves. For me, I listened to Arantati Roy, you know, you know, 20 years ago in Brazil. And I still, that's still in my mirror. You know, it's just like, I, you know, scratch at shame, you know, like whatever it takes, because it's, I, it's what I would want someone to do to me if I was that far gone, you know, like, please wake me up. 
So it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like I'm separating myself, but expressing my way of accountability. It's like the other thing is like I don't want to put people in jail. I it's like, but I do want to wake people up. That's love. I feel like that's love. And in the space of the grief, and I've I have a lifetime of dealing with grief. So um, for me, it has always been a gateway to more love. And so you know, it's, it's, it, I think maybe it comes more naturally for me because it is so like now automatic in the sense that I can, I can go to an intense pain and then just, I come through to love again. And, you know, like I basically do it every day given where we are, but, um, in, and even I can rage <laughs> and have it transform, like, what is the use of this rage in a way that is going to serve the whole, like that it, that oneness part is the same in the transformation of these emotions. And like, therefore, what is it to serve the whole? And I think it comes back to what I said earlier. It's like, if I'm making a decision, the whole has to be present. And what I find in like the rationalizing that makes me confused when I'm talking to people, it's like, it's a very separated, it's like the blinders separation. I'm doing this here, but if it doesn't encompass the all, then, you know, it's the means justifying the ends, which we know are, are like the road to hell is paved with good intentions kind of story. So I think that oneness is a, a key, like, you know, when we're looking for those little touchstones that help us through the day it's like where's the wholeness where's the oneness it helps us not separate when you know it's like you know whenever the the zionists are yelling at me i just like bless them and sometimes people come to protect me when they're um I mean, this has happened at the encampments and just happened at the biden fundraiser this week it's like people come up to protect me because they're yelling at me and they're like screaming you know like and I literally just stand there and it's like not affecting me at all. I'm, um, I feel like standing there sometimes when they get finished, they just leave, you know, it's just like, so it's, it is that, um, because it's not like we're going to have the answers when we're open to what is this moment offering, what is needed. I think even in that way, it's like, can I wholly be present? Which goes to Emily's saying, it's like, what is it to be in this moment that we've been so acculturated to be not in? And in the way Joe was saying, and to, I too, Joe, walk out my door and just I catch my breath in awe and just can never believe I am alive and I'm breathing and seeing this beauty. And, you know, I just, it still every day, I, I just, it just happened today when I walked out of my front door and just like, oh my God, I'm alive and this is amazing. And um, I can also be, you know, scream, throwing things about four hours before that at, you know, the, the insanity of how power is behaving. So um, how does that fit, you know, like finding ourselves in the whole, but in relationship with instead of reaction to? Thank you, Polly, the whole, yes. Um, Someone else have a reflection? Um, you know what, John? I'm gonna put everybody in um, our breakouts for uh, just 10 minutes and then we'll come back and share just so those that aren't sharing get a chance to share with each other. Um, Um, so four groups of three, uh, four groups, five groups, I think we'll do, um, we'll do 10 minutes of just reflections. What are you learning? Um, what are some things you've seen? What surprised you? Um, you know, what, what, if you think back a couple of months ago, you know, what's really come alive for you? And we'll come back in around uh, 10, 15 minutes. Let's see, I hope, um, I hope this will give you three in each group. <laughs> oh. 
Am I am I am I unmuted now? You're unmuted. Hi, John. Okay, now. Yes. Um, a couple of the ladies were talking about different natural phenomena, and they like the way they react to them. Uh, Noam Chomsky would say this. He didn't die, by the way. By the way, that was a hoax. Right. Noam Chomsky would say this. We don't think very clearly about anything until we have a name for it. You have to have a lexicon to address these issues. One of the words that has fallen out of a lexicon and isn't used very much anymore, except maybe in the courtroom, is the word bribery. We have very, we have very polite phrases like campaign contributions or donor <laughs> this, that. It's all bribery, it. but, but the word has fallen out of our lexicon. The other phrase that catches my eye all the time is we talk about the military industrial complex as a phenomenon in and of itself. And then in the alternative, we talk about the government. We need to learn that the military industrial complex is the government. And we aren't saying that yet. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A good lawyer. I'm just going to mute everybody because it's going to echo. Sorry. Um, what a good lawyer you are. <laughs> Whoops. Um, you have to unmute. Sorry. Unmute, John. There you go. There's a, yeah, there's no such thing as a good lawyer, by the way. <laughs> it's one of those, those prohibited phrases I talked about. Okay. All right. All right. It's smart player. <laughs> All right. I'm, so um, I hope you had fun together. I always love when you get to be together and sharing. Um, and that's so that's we're not going to be together in our sharing circle for another month. Just a reminder, the third was the night before 4th of July and it didn't feel right. And so on the second, which um, Emily's gonna put in the chat is, it's not gonna be exactly this, it's going to be where we help, we're gonna walk you through our new website. And Polly got a, a, a sneak preview of it. And um, it's it's really fun. We, we, we've spent a lot of time creating it because we wanted it to be relational. We wanted it for you to feel like it was serving you and, and there was joy in it. So, um, and Emily has created all the back end of it um, so that the front end could be um, useful and joyful and exploratory in, in ways that you could have fun. So that will be what happens on the second. After we do like a half an hour of here's how you use the book, here's how you interface the website with it, we'll have um, half an hour to just uh, catch up, ask questions. Um, and also, as I always say, it's a learning journey. So we're learning too, and we love feedback. We love to know what's working, what's missing, what you'd like, what, what's not there for you, you know, anything or what was useful or anything that, you know, helps us on this learning journey of serving others. Um, and then um, with what we'd also really love is in this month, the before we leave, if we just take one minute and you reflect on what commitment do you want to take for the next month, whether it's I'm going to play with this pivot um, and, and get to know it better, or I'm going to work on one of the capacities, listening or organizing or mapping or, you know, just so that you make a commitment of something right now that you are going to play with um, in the next month so that when we come back together in a month, you can talk about that and share you know, what that exploration was like. All of these things lead you in a journey. Um, they bring you more present, they uh, reflect it, it you know, by the commitment and working on them. It exposes the world in a new way. 
So pick something, write it down. And I'm gonna take a picture of who's here now. And we're gonna also ask everybody that's on the list that wasn't here to make one too. Um, so that um, when we come together, we can talk about even what that commitment meant, what that little past meant and what we learned from it and share that. So um, have a beautiful uh, July until I see you, uh, June, July, until I see you in the middle of July, unless I see you. Um, oh, looking into the Accomplices Not Allies Action Toolkit. Yes. <laughs> John. Yeah, I heard earlier a mention of the 17th. I guess we'll be, got something going on then. But Yeah, that's um, when we'll be back uh, together. So that's uh, four weeks away, right? I think that's four weeks away. Right. But I don't know whether I'll be able to make it or not because uh, Moji's coming back on that day. So oh. I might be, uh, I may be, might be at a round trip from the airport. Oh, well, well, that's a blessed place to be with Moji. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That, um, beautiful that they're coming back. And, you know, remember in this time to just keep your heart open, stay, you know, in the, keep yourself away from the war economy, invest in the peace economy. Um, lay paths for others to follow breadcrumbs and plant seeds and in the rich soil that is really rich right now um, because so much is up. Uh, the, the things that people used to hold on to are falling away and uh, let's give them new things to uh, ground in and root in. Thank you everyone for being here, for all you do, for being, you know, having lives to serve life and peace. And um, uh, let the summer nourish you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. And this, this recording will go up on YouTube tomorrow. Thank and you. It'll, it'll go out in the follow up email as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, Polly. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Polly. Yeah, thanks for coming, Polly. Bye, everyone. Bye, Gwen. Bye, John. Bye, the Johns. <laughs> Bye, Aaron. <laughs> Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you.